Welcome to Drawing with Damien. This is a short video all about drawing hands, how to structure them and how to find the level of detail and emphasis to fit within a whole figure drawing. And I'm going to begin by, uh, first I'm being the model, model and artist and teacher. I'm going to begin by doing some diagrammatic explanations of an approach to drawing hands. And then uh, I'll do a series of views of my hand. And then I want to go on and look at some of those drawings that I had you doing for the first video of the tennis player and um, the decorator and look at drawing hands quite quite small as part of a whole figure, um, a drawing of a whole figure. So we begin with um, the wrist. So with this particular pose here, I've just outlined my wrist. My watch strap is quite useful because that's showing you where my wrist is. And then I'm going to go diagrammatically from the wrist out to the knuckle. So that's the kind of shape. This is the back of the handle, hand and I've done a line there for where the knuckle is. I'm going to go then from wrist to knuckle straight to the fingers. I'm leaving the thumb for the time being and I'm going to do a kind of tentative outline for the shape of the fingers something like that, so that I can now go from the line of the knuckle out to the edge of those that shape to start to locate those fingers and make sure you only get four of them. So something like that. So the idea being, you know, people often worry that they do hands and they say, oh, it looks like a bunch of bananas. The bunch of bananas problem often comes from the fact that people aren't getting the fingers to come from the same knuckle. So I'm now changing that slightly, actually, because, you know, a knuckle is, is a line, but I think it's a bit of a curved line. That might be what I'm seeing there. So I've made sure that my fingers end at the end of that rough shape that I did but they start at the line of the knuckle. So wrist, knuckle, shape of fingers, lastly the thumb and one of the reasons why it's I was recommended, it is recommended to do the thumb last, I'm just doing something diagrammatic here just to show you that there is a kind of plane. Well there is a plane, it depends, I can do that with my hand and my thumb the sort of hinge that my thumb is on uh, is on, we could ident identify a plane there. And if my hand is, if my thumb is right down there, then you can definitely see that there's a change in plane from the back of my hand down to this hinge where the thumb is. So to, to locate, to recognize that kind of triangular plane means that you can then put the thumb attach the thumb uh, in the right direction, in the right position in relation to uh, the back of the hand. And you can see now that I've done all that, probably my wrist should have been a bit bit wider. Um, so that's, that's diagrammatically going from wrist, knuckle, shape of fingers to thumb. There's other things I could do to make this a little bit more um, three-dimensional, certainly, apart from getting the... the proportions right with the, the wrist. I mean, the kind of lighting I've got here I think is useful. I, I'm working on a grey sheet of paper and I've got some charcoal and I'll also get a bit of chalk. But the next thing that I could do actually with the lighting that I've got is look with my eyes half closed and see some of these shadow planes which are on the side of the finger, the side of the thumb, uh, and probably the side of each thing, finger. The back of the hand is is fairly light, uh, so that's that's a little bit of modelling. 
which helps my hand a bit. My hand still looks a little bit stiff. Um, that's probably because I put on some fairly straight lines. So having having found that um, structure with those particular points that I made, I can then go back and do a little bit more. And often what makes a big difference with drawing hands, the difference between a good hand uh, and an unsuccessful hand, I think is often just little accents. There may be points um, around the drawing of the hand where you want to just add a little bit of emphasis. Maybe it's here in the wrist, maybe it's at the fingertips or the tip of the thumb. It may be if your hand is resting on a surface, it's going to be the negative shape. Uh, introducing that, that's going to make more sense. And I'm probably going to have to pause because I didn't bring any chalk over to my, my drawing board. So I'm just going to pause and get a bit of chalk and I'm going to heighten this drawing to show you how, again, small changes to the emphasis with uh, dark accents or lighter highlights can actually make a hand work more successfully. So one thing that's you know, particularly flat about my drawing at the moment is this, this plane here on the back of the hand, which I wanted to emphasize um, because I had a point to make, uh, but actually it's not quite, I think the shadow pattern coming up um, on that area of the hand is is a bit different. I think the the edge is a bit rounder. And it might be that I could even at this point use a little bit of light. And I think I'm seeing a bit more light over there. So I can put some light marks on to gradually take away some of the, the flatness and the the geometric quality of that hand. I think that needs to be softened again. So let's try a different view. Maybe um, something like this. And I'll take the same approach. I'll start diagrammatically because I, that, I think, helps reinforce the lesson. Um, but it would be up to you whether you found a diagrammatic start helpful and wanted to do it, or whether you just learn to see these um, these steps, these stages, this sort of underlying structure. So I've got the inside of the hand, the inside of the palm. So that's my wrist, I've got the angle of the wrist. And there is, of course, a crease on the inside of the wrist. So then I want to go from wrist and I'm staying at the lower part uh, of the palm of the hand so I can find the, the knuckle. So I'm having to look through the smaller fingers to identify where the knuckle is. And you'll see, of course, what I've done is I've, I've given it a kind of curving shape. Um, so wrist, knuckle, and then the fingers, of course, now are making uh, another unusual kind of shape. I think it's something like that. Um, and as I did before, I'm going to go from the knuckle to the edge of that finger shape. It makes more sense. What I've just described probably makes more sense with the, the first finger. So that's there. Uh, and then I've got fingers which are overlapping. So I'm having to sort of see through and draw parts of my hand overlapping with others. And I'm probably, I think this happened with my last one, you know, the structure's okay. The proportion isn't quite right because I probably need a bigger a bigger palm to my hand to, mat, to fit those fingers and I need um, a bigger wrist. And then I've got a thumb. So again, the thumb, this time, you know, thumb could be out there, but it's in here. So it's going to be 
something like that. But as with before, I've done the thumb last after I've done the um, wrist knuckles and finger shape. So again, that's, that's currently an outline. What's a little bit more, I don't know, interesting about this particular view of the hand is there's actually quite a lot of shadow shapes and some of that, some of that detail that I've been talking about, different parts of the hand, might be a little bit lost in shadow. So I've been using charcoal and chalk on a piece of grey paper. And I think that's quite good to work with because it means I can smudge, I can draw fingers on top of fingers and then just remove the, the lines where I don't want them. And I can also introduce that pattern of chalk to heighten some of the lighter areas. So actually this is quite a good pose to talk a bit about um, fingernails and tips of fingers because you'll notice that I haven't done any fingernails yet. Um, drawing a hand like this I think it makes perfectly good sense to, to see that detail of fingernails. But it is something that needs to be not overdrawn. Um, so let's see what I'll do. I might just suggest something of that fingernail there. So again, this really goes together with what I was talking about with the previous hand, just adding certain accents, certain stronger marks. When I introduce the fingernails, if I'm going to do that, I don't want to make them too strong. I don't want to make that detail take over. And it may be that some of the accents that I put between the fingers, the creases um, around the edge of the hand, it may be that their um, accents points to emphasize more than, um, the, the, than the fingernails. But this finger here in particular, um, is a challenge because what I need to be able to do is show that this is, I'm looking at the tip of that finger. So I might want to have some sort of emphasis with that tip and possibly also, checking what I'm seeing, some of the description of the fingernail is going to be crucial in making that, the angle of that finger make sense. So I'm just taking that as an example where I might actually be adding some emphasis, some detail to a fingernail um, because I'm trying to make sense of the angle of that finger. Another thing you might notice I've been doing is, is when I've, I've the, the thumb is on that separate hinge, which I've talked about, which I'm introducing there, but notice the thumb points out. You know, it depends where, what direction we're looking at, but if we're seeing the, the side of the, the thumb, you'll see I've tended to make it point out the way. And that reminds me of another point worth making. It's often good actually, when you're drawing fingers, to taper them, make fingers a little bit pointy. You may find it makes your drawings, makes them look a little bit claw-like, which you'll, you'll not want. But I would err on the side of fingers being a bit pointy, a bit more tapered. It tends to give them direction. And um, I think it avoids the, the, other, the other food um, analogy of getting sausages. You don't want either bananas or sausages. And... Um, more pointy tapered fingers will be less sausage-like. So there we go. There's a few views. I think you should try. Um, you can set up your hand somewhere, lean it on something and just try some different views and have a go with this um, approach of the wrist, getting the angle of the wrist. So the wrist, the knuckle, shape for the fingers, and then the thumb on its uh, hinge. 
And now what I'm going to do is get some of those um, photographs uh, that I'll send to you again, and I sent you them, sent you them originally, um, of the tennis player and the decorator, and just have a look at what their hands are doing and trying to um, simplify and condense what I've just described to you uh, for some drawings of a, of a whole figure where the hands are um, described in sufficient detail. So here is one of the um, poses of our tennis player and I'll send you these again um, but I've just sketched out her pose but I, what I want to do is apply some of what I've said about drawing the hands so her right hand uh, her arm, her lower arm, is going straight out, almost horizontally. And then the wrist actually is at this sort of angle. Because you'll see, when you look at the photograph, that the back of her hand is dropping like that. So her knuckle is there. I'm exaggerating this all a bit, just to make, it sen make, make sense of it. And her grip of the tennis racket lets us see the first finger and a second finger and then the others are just disappearing into the knuckle. Uh, because she's holding a racket I think it does help to include the what's being held and the thumb is so that's the side of her hand there's just an extra bit from which to which her thumb is connected. So her thumb is something like that. So that's pretty dreadful because I'm using a thick bit of charcoal, but I just want you to see, I should use a thin bit really, um, which would be appropriate, but I want to um, make sense of that information in terms of this, uh, this drawing of the whole figure. Let me pause while I get a thin stick of charcoal. You'll be pleased to know this is live and unrehearsed. So there we go. There's the wrist at that angle. Back of the hand. Down to the knuckle. And I'm seeing... And in fact the fingers go even... There's a change in direction from the fingers which protrude. Going down even further. And then the thumb is there with the racket handle. Part of, part of what I'm describing. And in order to, you know, bring this together in the whole drawing, you know, she's got some light and dark contrast with her white top and her dark hair. So it's, I think it's probably quite important to know that so that when I start to work on the hand, uh, I might use my rubber to get some light off of the back of the hand. I think the fingers can stay a little bit shaded. And I've got the black racket handle and I've probably even put a little bit of light maybe on the thumb and on the back of the hand. Something like that. So I'm just trying to select a few things that I'm emphasizing um, to give the hand that articulation and that emphasis but you know you'll notice I'm not doing fingernails um, so the other one so there's the sleeve and the lower arm coming straight back like this and then we've got the inside of the hand this time so for my sake uh, my own sake I'm putting in a line for the um, wrist and then there's a funny thing happening with the fingers but that's where the inside of the knuckle is the finger shape is all the fingers are bunched together and one overlaps. So that's that's the outside of the hand. And then the th oh no, there's an extra finger. Wait a minute, there's an extra finger there. Because the thumb is then coming across. <laughs> Let me just have a close look. Well, it turns out this isn't the best photograph to send you because after really close inspection, I see that her thumb is here. 
it is where I thought it would be, but it's um, obscured a bit by the um, the rest of the fingers, and so that's that's not making your lives very easy. So I'll I'll try another one, but um, I got waylaid there. So wrist, knuckle, shape of the fingers, thumb last of all. So what am I going to emphasise in this? That's that's probably the point, isn't it? For this whole pose, I think probably uh, it just needs to be a bit of a. Does it almost need to be a bit of a silhouette with not much? much emphasis. Maybe I'll get a bit of light on the back of the hand and I'll try and uh, distinguish the, the thumb from the uh, rest of the fingers that are beside it. So let's try a little bit of light on there. Okay, well I'm going to do another one because I'm not sure that I've proved much to you there. So here's our decorator and this hand here, so narrow wrist. Maybe I'll do a bit of a curving line for that wrist because I think um, this arm is going away from me. And um, this is a slightly separate point, but you can use contours. I mean, I'll just do this to make the point. These, these curving lines, um, are giving the contour of the arm, but they're also showing the direction. So that's a fairly short arm because it's going away from us. But there's the wrist, and I go from the wrist to the knuckle. So the knuckle is also a curving line, it's a bit like that. And then because he's gripping the end of the roller, I've just really got the kind of undulating pattern of the knuckle, maybe there's a tiny bit of finger. I think we may be seeing a bit of the first finger. And then the thumb is sort of folded in on, on, the, on itself there, so I can hardly see the thumb. So in this particular drawing of the whole figure, uh, what am I going to emphasize? What, what do I show? It's probably really just the change in direction from the thin wrist to the knuckle with its undulating um, pattern of of knuckle and, and um, tips, not tips of fingers, but um, ends of fingers. And I think probably the gap between the first finger and the second finger, and also maybe between the thumb and the side of the hand, those are things that I would choose to emphasize a bit more. And uh, he has actually got the you know, the rod in his hand, so there's a bit at the back coming through there. Maybe because it's a drawing that's going to have black and white, I might put a little bit of light on the back of the hand there. The other hand up here, again, it's the inside now. It's seeing sort of more the palm of the hand. Uh, he has got a wristwatch as well. The wrist is about there. And the knuckles, I've got to imagine, but the knuckle is in there at a bit of an angle like that. So here's the outside of the hand. And the fingers are making, the fingers are folded over the, he's got the, the stick here. So the fingers are folded over that and they're making, they're coming across the palm a bit like that. And the outside of the fingers is there. And the thumb is resting on the rod, a bit like that. So what am I going to emphasize here? I think the challenge here really is I've got the fingers coming across the rod like that. And I probably do need to show those four fingers. That one is a bit shorter actually. But what I don't want to do is overstate that sort of repeating pattern of fingers. So I think, I think this is where the charcoal can be quite useful because I can, you know, I can define 
each of those fingers. I'm using the rubber now just to sort of clean um, and define those fingers, but I am inclined to smudge them a bit. And it's often better, you know, I've got a whole fig figure. I don't want to overdo the emphasis of the, the hands and the details of the hands. And so it's quite good with charcoal to smudge a bit, to take away that definition, and then just restate it in certain places. And I think I'd almost go for the tips of the fingers here, where they meet the palm of the hand. I think most of the hand could be almost a little bit smudged and, and in shadow. But if I can put some dark points at the tips of the fingers, and see also whether I'm going to put light on the arm and maybe a bit of light on the thumb. So I'm trying to, as I did with that hand, I've only got one, I've got two points of emphasis between the first finger and, and the thumb and the side of the hand. So I'm not detailing every single finger. That's the point. Within the, the, the context of this whole figure, um, I want to maybe select one or two fingers and if there's a gap between the first finger and the second that's ideal sometimes it's the thumb so though that's something you might want to look at and experiment with bearing in mind this point that you don't want to detail every finger within the context of the whole pose but you do want to find ways of explaining what is it, what is exactly happening to the position and the pose of each hand within those dynamic figures. So I'm going to send you, I'm going to get you, uh, recommend that you start with your own hands, do some studies. I'll attach a handout with an explanation of these points about wrist, knuckle, shape of fingers and thumb. And I'll also send you one or two of these photographs again of the tennis player and the decorator for you to have a go at applying that approach, constructing your hand um, applying that to the whole figure. So there's my other pieces. Okay, or well, I look forward to seeing your work. Bye bye.